Hi folks, welcome back to the Mellow Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill and actually i um, starting this week's video from my dining room table where I'm showing pictures of my resource book on the LBSC Titch. In this week's episode, I'm going to cover machining some of the castings that I got from AJ Reeves that I'm pointing to here. They're the bearings for the eccentric valves and also the guide bar for the, uh, the piston slide rod. So if you'll stay tuned for the next 15 minutes or so, I'll show you how those things go. And I appreciate it. Welcome to all the new subscribers. If you have a question, please ask. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. And um, please pass the word. Help me grow the channel. Thanks. Okay, starting a fresh new week, so identified a couple of projects to work on. First thing I wanted to point out, I had ruined in a different different little project. I had ruined my number 40 and 41 drill bits, and I know I can cut them off. I probably will cut them off and resharpen. But in the meantime, I was making a run to my local Ace Hardware anyway, and I asked them if they had number bits like this, and sure enough, they had an entire display, and they were about two dollars a piece, two nineteen, I think, something like that. So, you know, certainly, just ex I'm excited that I was able to make a, um, you know, substitution for the existing bits. I was going to look and see where these things are made. You know, they're made in China, so who knows. I mean, depends on the quality standards, obviously, how they are, but I'm, I'm just glad to have new bits of the right size, and I uh, thought I'd show that. the show and tell stuff. I've gone through, and I think that the next things I'm going to work on are these castings that I just got from AJ Reeves, or Reeves 2000. So the, these are the guide brackets then that go on to the frame and this of course is the set of bearings left and right side that will support the eccentric valve rockers so to speak still waiting on the new eccentric strap casting to get here so that that's one of the things obviously that goes on the axle so I thought I'd work on things that don't go on the axle right now do that first. One more thing while I'm playing show and tell. I finally, after many years of Fred and my other friends urging me to get um, firebox bricks to do my silver soldering on, I finally I had a day off from work today, so I decided to go and get these. I found them at the Ace Hardware also, and they were not cheap. They were like $35 for this box. But I'm gonna, I've never had any before. What I used to do, and this is not a good practice, but you can see my little setup here right next to my granite surface plate. I have my uh, chunk of railroad tie, which is my makeshift anvil for things. And I've got a, an old concrete paver that has basically been the support. You know, I'd try to chalk up the work on different things when I would solder it, but that's essentially been my little surface. I carry that outside and do it on the picnic table <coughs> out there. But, you know, someday, maybe I'll actually make this piece of railroad tie actually look like an anvil. It's been in, in my ideas for years now. But let's take a look at what these firebox box bricks look like. Figured there'll be a lot of silver soldering on the Titch project. And probably a good idea to have these. Finally do it right. I don't know why it took so long to buy them. Hey, they look pretty well packed. I don't know if I can get these out one handed or not. It's exciting for me to have. Okay, there we go. Nice. It's funny, I, I had in my mind that these things would be a lot lighter than they are, but they're not. They're pretty substantial, pretty heavy. Not super heavy, but. They're not, not feathery light. I was thinking they'd be feather light, sort of like a brick of asbestos or something. Of course, that's been outlawed for years. But So now if I'm doing something inside, I can lay these on top of the concrete block there and even use them around the sides to build a little hearth a frame for it. So thank you, Ace Hardware. Okay, I'm going to start with this piece because I love doing stuff in the lathe. 
and it seems to make the most sense. What's interesting is in the book they say to clean everything up with a file and then grasp the piece by the short end and machine the long end, this part here, and drill it through, drill it and ream it through. I'm not quite sure I want to do that. I, I will file it first and get it all cleaned up, but I'm thinking it'd be a lot more stable, you know, after I saw it in half here, <clears throat> to grasp it by this piece here and do most of the work while it's in the long, long axis, and I can clean up the back face and the end of it. So we'll see. I'll bring it back for. It's always interesting, you know, to study the castings first. These are very nice castings. I don't think it's going to take a lot of a lot of file work to clean it up, remove that flash. But I'll show you a little bit of that process. Now I've got the part clamped up in a little vise to do the work. All right after a few minutes with the files, I got it cleaned up pretty nice. I'll go ahead and saw it in half with my. I think I'm just going to use a handsaw got a coping saw here with a metal blade. just wanted to show a second of this. I put a new blade in my coping saw and I do like using power tools of course and my power power bandsaw but look how nicely this cuts. The main reason I wanted to use a handsaw for this is so that I wouldn't lose my fingers in the bandsaw holding something fiddly and I wouldn't lose the part having it fly off after I cut my uh, cut the pieces off. And I'm a little bit joking about the finger part. I mean, I, if I hold a fiddly part, I will use some appliance to hold it, hold it steady. But, you know, handsaws are nice. You do have a lot more control and a lot less risk. So, let me dig my little coping. Okay, one down and one to go. Came out okay. I used a combination of the three jaw chuck at first to grab the larger portion and turn that down, or excuse me, to hold that. And then I, I roughed in this side and then ended up, I turned this part to um, just round to 5 16 inch diameter and then face this this portion here and then I was able to flip it around and hold it in a uh, 5C collet and then continue to machine and then put it back in the 5C collet to um, and grip it here to drill and ream the center hole. So the only thing I need to do now is to um, drill the two, drill and tap the two holes that will hold this into the I've got it chucked up by the long spigot and I'm just cleaning it up. And it's really good. Doing a little facing on the one end. Okay, here we go. After cleaning up the one side, I faced off the inside of it and got it clamped in the um, 5 16 inch three jaw chuck now. And I can turn this down to 5 16 of an inch and face the uh, this, will, this is actually the side that goes into the frame, so I can turn this to diameter, face this off, and set this length as well. Okay, the rocking shaft bearings are essentially complete, with the exception of the holes in the little elliptical places. It took me quite a while, but I was careful and kind of went back over a couple of things. So, all in all, I'm very pleased with how they came out. And looking forward to the next. Step. Now, just looking at this, this casting a little bit more closely. This is the guide bar brackets. There's two of them here. There's a left one and a right one. <clears throat> and really, the only work that's got to get done, I got to cut off this big piece of flash at the top. And I think I'm gonna do that right now. It's Monday evening out here in the workshop, and it's cool. So I'm gonna cut that off. And the rest of this, look at that. There's just a little bit of flash to file off on these parts here and then eventually cut it into two pieces and you can even see the little marks see those little casting lines here where the cuts really ought to be and the only machining is of what i can either file or mill the bottom square and at the proper dimension with the flanges here and um, then i have to drill the succession of three holes it will be used to locate the bracket on the side of the frame. So I've laid that out. I've drawn a little diagram of that first. I just haven't figured out if I'm going to use 256 or 348 screws. I've got taps for both. 
I have a lot of 256 fasteners. I don't have that many 348s, but that would be the closest size to a 7BA. So I'll start cutting this and clean up and get ready. The guide bar bracket. Double check the measurements and they all look good. And I thought, <clears throat> you know, it might actually be a lot easier to drill the holes, the mounting bracket holes, <clears throat> while it's like this. I don't know how clear you can see this, but so I've laid them out and I just use my center punch to center the holes. So I'm thinking about, I'm not going to do it tonight, but tomorrow I could put this in the mill and then just drill and tap those holes in, in each side and then, then I saw the thing apart because I've got it all cleaned up with a file, a little bit of belt sander, probably could do a little bit more at the top there, but the cleanup was really easy and the, the sawing apart is going to be fairly easy too, I'm sure, because there's those lines I showed you before, but I think it'd be easier just to go ahead and machine this thing to drill and tap those holes now while well, the unit is together be less floppy in the vise with those two pieces held like this so just make sure i um get the <clears throat> excuse me the surface is being machined make sure that that's parallel with the top of the vise i am finishing up i'm using a number 50 drill because i decided i would use 256 as the fastener to fasten the guide blocks to the frame. This is, this shows the setup here, what I had in mind, leaving this together and not sawing the two pieces apart. thought this would be the hardest part, really, putting the holes in there. I've got to flip it over to the other side, and the only other operation is squaring the uh, feet to the bottom of it. Now, I wasn't going to do this because I don't like milling stuff that's not supported very well and these things kind of look wobbly, but they didn't feel wobbly and because I had this oriented and in the vise secured and oriented where my holes are parallel, I thought I would cheat. I went, I went ahead and stuck a small end mill in the drill chuck, which I know that's a bad practice. So I. I just I had already filed these things so that they were almost perfectly clean anyway. I just took off, I did a couple of passes at two thou a piece just to flatten these out. I think I, I didn't take off more than eight thousandths of an inch just to flatten these out. So now they're in the same plane as the holes or perpendicular to the holes that um, for the frame. Okay, now that I've got the ends milled and everything, I'm using my soft jaws. I can't say enough good about this, especially for holding castings. These are aluminum vice jaws, which I've milled for different purposes over time, and having this little lip or notch on the end is extremely convenient for holding an irregular casting. So I'm sawing through with my little hand saw. It's not taking very long and it's working really, really well. Nice, quiet, peaceful. I'll be able to get, I'm sawing the first one close to this edge. The second one, I'll just zip off and, oops, sorry, poor camera work. The second one, I'll zip off in the bandsaw or just belt sand it down or file it. Probably a combination of those things. We'll see how it how it goes when I once I cut it. I did start with the um, back where the little lines were. I made some very shallow saw cuts there just so I'll have a more neater, more neat finish when I get all the way through. Okay, I'm going to call these parts good. They still need to be tapped unless the frame is going to get tapped. This is I just drilled it with the number 50 size, which is the tapping size for 256, which is what I plan on using. And I used a little pin vise after I drilled the holes, after I'd done all the machining and stuff. I did use a belt sander to clean up the backs and then I, I filed this you can see this one I had blued it and filed it to get it completely flat and flush and square from this part to this part let me show you what I mean I don't know how good that'll show up but I did them both the same way as carefully as possible to get them so it's square from where it will attach to the frame to the top of the guide. And I need to do for the frames, since this uh, locomotive was originally
constructed apparently with the idea of using the Walsh Arts valve gear and not the slip eccentrics. I do need to drill three holes in either side, which I've just carefully laid out and center punched here. And I was just laying the eccentric bearing next to it just to, to see to make sure that these, uh, these holes will indeed fit. So I've laid it out according to the directions in the book. The center will be bored 5 sixteenths, which will admit this um, will be a, a fit for the bearing. It'll come in from the inside. And then the, the uh, smaller holes will be just drill holes for pilot holes, basically, for the tap size that I will use when I eventually locate and drill and tap these guide bushes. Here I've got the frame locked up inside the mill, and I just located this first hole here. These would be number 50 holes, the center one would be 5 sixteenths. And I'll show real quick my setup for drilling, the, drilling and tapping the holes in these guide blocks for the bearings they are. So I took a piece of angle iron and I drilled a 5 sixteenths inch hole in it and I've used crazy glue to hold this in place and then I've just drilled my number 50 holes and I'll tap them. I'll get the tap started and then finish by hand with this for both of them. I'm pretty satisfied, happy that the everything fit pretty well with these eccentric bearings. That was something I was hoping to accomplish today, was to get them installed in the frame there. So, I think we're looking good. I ended up using 256 screws that had a box of, they're three quarter inches long. I had to cut them down um, to about a quarter inch. One of them is still a little bit long. I need to trim it. But there we go. And to give you an idea of the completed titch, what it looks like, these are the eccentrics. And right here I'm pointing to the bearing surfaces that I just machined and installed in the frame. And you can see the bottom part of the guide bars too. It's a little crowded in the photograph. So next I'll be working on the actual lever arms. There's an outer one and an inner one that ride on a 3 16th inch piece of drill rod here. So I'll be tackling those and getting ready. And the next thing, hopefully I'll get the other eccentric in the mail from Reeves pretty soon and I can, the eccentric strap casting, and I can make those and finish those up. So I think that'll wrap it up for this week. And like I said, please ask questions. If you have any, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, help pass the word, help me grow the channel. Thanks everybody, have a great week.